Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. Today, we are going to be doing the mid-year freakout tag. So this is a fun little book tag that has been around for quite a few years, but it's my first year actually doing it. I got my particular set of questions from Books and Lala. I will link her channel. Um, I love her. She's amazing. And her videos are so fun, and I aspire to be as cool as she is. But anyway, <laughs> that's where I got these particular questions, but I think that they're, they're the same um, no matter who you get them from, basically. So anyway, let's just get into the questions. The first one is, best book you've read so far in 2023? And this was really hard for me to choose, so I didn't. <laughs> I picked three and later in the year I will have to actually choose um, if you missed last year I did a book bracket where I picked my favorite from every month and then made them face off against each other to find my favorite book of the year and I will do that again this year so we will see what the results of that are but the three that I've chosen so far that have been my favorite this year have been Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel I absolutely love this one and I am still thinking I think about it all the time every single time I go to an airport I think about this book um, the Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. This one felt like what reading felt like to me as a kid, and I read a ton as a kid, and that is why I loved it so much. I also loved the story itself, but the feeling that I had while reading it, I was like, this is what reading is about. And the last one that I absolutely loved was A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking by T. King Fisher. This was one of the first T. King Fishers that I've read, and I really loved it. I thought it was really fun, and I would love to read more of her books. The next question is best sequel you've read so far in 2022, or hello, 2023. Um, the I've read a few sequels this year, but the one that came to mind for me was the third book in the Lord of the Rings series, The Return of the King. I absolutely loved this one, and I already want to reread Lord of the Rings, even though I just finished reading it for the first time this year, because it was just such a great experience for me. I'd never seen the movies, I'd never read the books, and so I was just like, man, I love this. So that definitely would be the answer for me. My favorite reread, which is the next question, was Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I read that when I was like a probably a freshman in high school, so it's been quite a few years now. It was just a lot of fun, and I forgot how much I loved it, and I, I loved the movie. Um, so I'm very familiar with the storyline and everything, but it just, it was just great. I just love that. The next question is genre you've been loving slash reading the most. And for me, that's been fantasy slash cozy fantasy. I have always been a fantasy girly, but I kind of, you know, go back and forth. Um, but this year I have just really enjoyed fantasy and I'm just, I'm just thriving in my fantasy life. The next question is new release you haven't read yet but you want to and that for me is going to be At Atlanta, At Atlanta, At Atlanta I think is how you say it, by Jennifer Saint. I love Jennifer Saint's books. I read Electra and Ariadne last year and I'm actually rereading Electra right now and I just love the way she writes. I have always loved Greek stories. Um, I'm a person Jackson girl, that's, that's what I grew up on, you know? So reading any type of like Greek mythology retelling books, I'm like, it takes me back and I love it and I really love her books. So I'm excited to read that one. The next question is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I'm not gonna lie, I had to look up books that were coming out in 2023 because I, I don't, I don't really follow that that much and I think I need to um but one I saw on the list that is actually coming out in June so like I don't really know if that counts for the second half of the year but I'm going to count it is The Only One Left by Riley Sager. I've only read one Riley Sager and I really liked it. Um I read The House Across the Lake which I know is a pretty divisive book um, and I would like to read more from him because I did I did really enjoy that and I thought it was well written. This is like kind of like a Lizzie Borden style murder and then somebody is going to go live in, to, to care for the woman who committed the murders or supposedly committed the murders. Um, and she's saying that it's not her and she, and the girl who's going to live with her is going to help like write about what happened because it's like a whole family massacre similar to like the Borden family killings. Um, and that just sounds really interesting. So that's by Riley Sager. The next question was your biggest disappointment, and for me that was Authority by Jeff Vandermeer. I actually haven't talked about it on the channel yet because 
I read it this month in May, so it will be in my May wrap-up um, coming up pretty soon here. And I just... I really loved Annihilation because it's so weird and you don't know what's happening. But what I liked about it was that they're in Area X and you're, you're surrounded by this nature and you don't know what's real. And this one is similar in the sense that you don't know what's real, but you're in a building the whole time, basically. And it swore significantly more, and so it just kind of took me out of the story, and I just didn't like it as much. Um, so that, for me, was the biggest disappointment. Biggest surprise, I would say, is Tuck Everlasting by Natalie Babbitts, because I... I, I, I had heard of Tuck Everlasting, but I didn't know what it was about at all. And so I went into it and I was like, I think I'll like this book. You know, everyone says that I'll like it. And then I didn't know what it was about. So then when I finally read it, I was like, oh my gosh, I love this. It's so fun and it's so cozy. And so that was the biggest surprise for me just because I didn't know what the actual plot was. <laughs> so yeah. Favorite new author, I think is going to have to be Emily St. John Mandel. I read Station Eleven and... Sea of Tranquility. Yikes, I forgot it. Um, I also read part of Glass, The Glass Hotel, but I was listening to it, and I think that's what took me out of the experience, so I didn't finish it, and I would like to finish it eventually. But I just love her writing, and I would love to read more from her. I also have really been enjoying the, the two T. Kingfisher books that I read. I really enjoyed, and I have um, What Moves the Dead on hold, and I know that one is a scarier one, so I'm excited to get to that one. And a friend of mine on Instagram... Um, what is her, her name is Erica, but what is her, let me find what her actual username is so that I can tell you. Erica Loves Lit. Okay, that's what her, her, um, username is. Erica Loves Lit. She told me, she read it and she told me that it's not, like, too gory or scary, so that made me want to read it a lot more. Because it's been kind of on my radar, but I was afraid that it would be too scary. And it's an Edgar Allan Poe retelling, so I'm excited to get to that one. And we'll see if that really seals the deal on if T. Kingfisher can be a new favorite author for me or not. New favorite character? This one's really hard for me because, uh, I don't know, I feel like I, in my recent years of reading, don't get super obsessed with a single character anymore. Like, that's just not something that I, I don't know, really think about that much. Um, but one that I'd say that I loved the narrative voice and I loved this character was Mona from A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking by T. Kingfisher because she was hilarious and the narrative voice in that book was so unique and so funny so that one I think would be my my new favorite character. The next one is a book that made you cry. Station Eleven I think made me cry at the end of it but I don't really remember. I don't cry that well that's a lie. I do cry really easily but I haven't there haven't been that very many books this year that I've been like so upset about that I'm crying. Um, a book that made me happy, which is the next question, is The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. Um, that one was just so nostalgic. I watched the movie growing up, but I never read the book, and I just ended up really loving it, and that one was definitely one that made me happy. The next question is the most beautiful book that you bought so far this year or received. Um, this one is if I have a few answers. So... This one, I think the cover is absolutely beautiful, but I DNF'd it, and this is how far in I am. So I don't have that much left, but we'll see if I ever finish reading this. But I think the cover is just gorgeous, and I technically got this around Christmas time last year, but I don't buy that many books, to be honest. I mostly um, read from Libby. And so I don't have like the physical copy of a lot of books, but one book that I also got that I really loved and was just a great experience for me was Shady Hollow by Gino Black. This was the book I received in my um, surprise book exchange that I did with Harmony, and this is a super so cute cover. And I, I this cover is I would say really cute, but I wouldn't necessarily say like beautiful. But I did. I still love it though, and I love this book, so I had to give this a little shout out as well. And I'm excited to read the rest of the series. Uh, the next question is what book do you feel like you need to read by the end of the year? And for me, this is a classic, and it's Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. I've been wanting to read this year this book for quite a few years. Um, but my local library never had it, but I recently moved, and my new library does, and so I'm on hold for it, and 
This is a book that is about war, but it's through a sci-fi lens, and I've heard it's amazing, and I really want to read it, so. The next question is favorite video that I've made so far this year, and for me that has to be my surprise book exchange that I did with Harmony. That was such a fun video. If you missed it, I will link it. Go check it out. And we chose books off each other's want to read list, um, secretly. And we read them and annotated them and then sent them to each other. And so that's why I have um, Shady Hollow, because that was a book that I wanted to read. And so it's annotated by Harmony, and that's just, like, the funnest thing I've ever done. <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely go check her out. Along the same vein as that question is my favorite book community members, Harmony. I've talked about her a ton already in this video. She's awesome. Um, at Harms Honey. The next... A video creator that I love I also already talked about and that's Kayla at Books and Lala. She is so creative and I love it. Speaking of creativity, Allie from Allison's Pages. Wow! Or Allison Pages? I think it's just Allison Pages. I love her videos. Her editing is amazing. She uses the funnest sound effects and they're also always like, not always, but like a lot of her sound effects are like Nintendo 64 sound effects from games that I used to play. I recently got my chords for that, for the Nintendo 64 so I could play it again, and it's been so fun, and so I just absolutely love that, and she also has chronic illness, and so I just can relate to her in a lot of ways that way, and so I just love watching her videos, and then the last person I wanted to shout out really quick was Faith from Faith's Reading Things. She's so sweet, and she's so kind, and her videos are a lot of fun to watch. So yeah, that is the mid-year freakout tag. I'm excited that I was finally able to do this and I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you're going to do this tag or if you want to answer any of the questions in the comments. I would love to hear about your reading experiences so far this year. Hopefully they're good and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!